All right, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy JJ and Play here. And today we're gonna to be reacting to Train for Any Argument with Harvard. Is that really the title? Anyways, we're gonna learn how to argue better. You know what I'm saying? This video is a year old, but shoot, I wanna see what they got to say because I love arguing. You know what I'm saying? Arguing so good because it's like only depending on who you're arguing with. Let's just jump into it. Conversations are in a state of crisis. Best. Some people don't argue, they just people fully talk. Convinced of their views. What do they say? If two people talking, who listening? Most people don't argue, it's just people yelling at each other. Shouting at each other from a distance. Yeah. One of the reasons why we find it so difficult is I believe because the skills of good argument have been atrophying for some time. Right. We no longer view argument as something to be worked at. Bro, I, I used to tell people this all the time. Like, they'd be like, JJ, what do you like to do? I'm like, I like to argue. Because, again, I like understanding two different perspectives. People are like, argument has such a negative connotation to it. Like, I, they added emotions to the word and anger and everything. I'm like, argument is supposed to be just two different views. It can be mad sometimes, or most of the time it's mad. That's why people add the, you know, mad attachment to it. But I'm like, I just want to understand your perspective. You understand my perspective. You can walk away both having the same perspective or agree to disagree and have an understanding civilly. You know what I'm saying? A civil conversation. People be like, they want you to just use debate. Why are you using argue? Like, anybody going to argue with you? But if you search up the definition of debate, it has the word argue in it. Other we see it as something we jump into out of instinct or defensiveness. Defensiveness. The bad so. arguments that result decrease our confidence in what disagreements can do for us. Right. So the quality of the conversation... Oh, uh, look, all these news friends. channels promote negativity. We restore confidence and faith in what disagreements can be and right. to highlight its potential as a source for good as well as a source for ill. My name is Bo So, I'm a two-time world debate champion. I want to watch some debates, coach of like a Australian championship or something. Like, how do you debate? I am the author of Good Arguments. How to argue better. That's what we're here for. I'm a great arguer, guys. You know what I'm saying? Me, my... I feel like understanding, I'm pausing a lot, but I feel like understanding argument, you got to understand like emotions, perspectives, your tone in your voice, the specific words you use when you're talking to specific people. Like this is all stuff you got to think about. Love of debate is inextricably tied to a life that I've led of always moving countries. Okay. I had to move from South Korea to Australia as an eight year old without really speaking English. And I quickly found the hardest part of crossing language lines of cultural lines was disagreements, disagreements. where people tend to be more disruptive, to interrupt, to speed up and slow down. Mm. In response to all that, I resolved to be very agreeable in the way in which I presented at school and to okay. keep my thoughts to myself. Mm. The thing that changed Silence that for agreeable. was I joined the debate team off the strength of one promise which was that in debate when one person speaks no one else does if two people's talking who's listening nobody if one person got talk one person got listen i'm trying to put y'all on game bro i'm trying to put y'all on game and to someone who had been interrupted and spun out of conversation mm -hmm. that sounded to me like a kind of salvation right we could restore if the word argument the ability to respond to any argument wisdom lies in knowing which arguments to respond to and which parts mm. of an argument to respond mm. to wisdom arguments lies on are easy okay. to start and hard to end because <laughs> there are no lie. number of differences between two people and unless mm. you're careful to say we're having this disagreement at close. this moment and not all the other disagreements we could be having Mm. All of the differences between two people can start flooding in and the argument becomes this unruly mass where Damn. any of the potential sources of conflict can come to the fore and you're not making progress on any given one. <laughs> Man, this is this is real, bro. But like, y'all gotta worked. listen listen to what you're saying. What do you say? We could be arguing about so many different things, and we start off with this argument. And then you start pouring in a bunch of other disagreements on a bunch of other stuff. 
and you're not getting anywhere with your conversation or your argument, debate, whatever you want to call it, right? But that's how really people be like, and then again, you got to think about his wisdom. Like that's probably like one of the big things you got to take away from this specific part of the video so far is like knowing when to argue and like, you know what I'm saying? Just basically how and stuff like that, like about certain topics. Cause some people, again, you could tell when people just argue just to argue, like they're not trying to listen. They're not trying to understand. They don't want their minds changed. Like their mind is already made up. They're set, closed minded. You don't even, don't even engage in that, bro. You're wasting your time. Pick my fights more wisely. Pick your fights wisely. Risa framework. Risa. R A R I S A. Challenging a claim. Ask four things. Okay. First, whether the disagreement is in fact real, <laughs> as opposed to a misunderstanding. Some people just want to get their skin. Is to ask whether it's important enough Most to, of the time it's to not justify important. the disagreement. The third is to ask whether the topic of disagreement is specific enough in order for you to make some progress. And the fourth is mm. to ask whether you and the other person engaged in the disagreement are aligned in your objectives for wanting to partake in that conversation. I got something better. The fifth one, once you check off all these boxes and you realize none of these are, you know, you disagree with all these four, then you say three words after that. You got it and you walk away because you're not getting anywhere. If you're not doing this first one, what was the first one again? If you like, it's not real, it's not important, it's not specific, it's not aligned. The fifth one that you do, you got it. That that's literally all you gotta do. You got it. Just don't argue no more. Don't say nothing else. You got it. If they walk away thinking they won, because that's the purpose, shoot, live your life, go to bed happy. Hope your pillow By cold. Checking off on these four lists, you can't guarantee that a conversation is going to go well, but you may be able to give it the best possible chance of doing the so. The best possible chance. One of the limitations of the RISA framework that I worry about is that it is increasingly difficult to find the right kind of alignment in people's interest for wanting to engage in a disagreement. Okay, the so alignment, the purpose. So if you have two sides that simply want to hurt one another's feelings, that's some kind of alignment, right. not the right kind that leads to productive conversation. Mm. So one place where I even you think might about like be that. able to apply the RISA framework is getting together with I not think about like family that. for Thanksgiving or Christmas and knowing that some of the personal or political disagreements are going to bubble up to the surface. And there's going to add the a bunch of other stuff. RISA provides two sources of help in that situation. The first is that mm. every disagreement should start with a little bit of agreement. Okay. And that is often naming exactly what it is that you disagree about so that it doesn't bubble right. up into all the different areas in which you don't see eye to eye oh i knew that i knew that duh you know what i'm saying like okay what do we understand because then you gotta understand what you have in common to then come up with a solution and common ground for what you disagree on so then y'all can you know what I'm saying? Basically flatline and it's not going to be a rocky road no more. You feel me? The step is to name you feel the disagreement me? in front of you. The second thing My is, disagreement you, is... Well, why do you want to engage in this disagreement? Mm. And can we come to an agreement about what it is that we're hoping to get out of this conversation? So forcing the slightly quarrelsome family member who just wants to Make be a civil. contrarian or to cause trouble to say, are you really in this? hoping to persuade me to change my mind. That bit of negotiation of why it is that we're in the conversation in the first instance can often allow our conversations to go better than if we just jump into the disagreement. This kind of reminds me of a quote. It's like how is not as important as why. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of stuff is kind of going back to, for at least me, is going back to like purpose. Like why are we doing this? You know why this why that because if you have that then again you're going to have some kind of reason to do this that is what i'm getting out of it at least it allows us to almost make a contract with have a reason side. to go this forward is what we're disagreeing about. continue these are the reasons why we're engaging in that dispute 
And one of the things that you can do with someone who tries to break those rules to expand the debate into something it wasn't about to right. change the topic to introduce new reasons for wanting to engage in the dispute so how do you do this with the lebron versus mj of the agreement that we made and to bring the conversation back to those parameters just as any number of the differences between two people i really want to see what the actual debate any number of things that people say within an argument are teachers to make us do like damn their debates cases. these are the ones in which the revolution works closing i'll take you if you have something and a part of the wisdom one has to develop as a debater is to know which arguments to challenge and which to let go a marxist revolution at this point doesn't change that and will lead to when a to challenge when to let go there are two questions that okay. we often ask to make that decision the first is is this disagreement between the two sides necessary to resolve in order to make progress <laughs> Mm, that's a good point. I feel like a lot of this stuff, a lot of prop, a lot of people know, but they let the emotions during the situation forget that this is something that they do know. If that makes sense to y'all, because there is certain things that you just don't need to again resolve. There's certain things that you don't need to try to convince otherwise, because it's it's irrelevant. I mean, that just goes back to picking and choosing, like you said, being wise, picking and choosing when to argue about certain things the argument and if it's not is us challenging it going to help us make progress on the overall dispute no matter most likely how offensive not or wrong seeming it may be by asking whether it's first necessary to challenge or even if it's not whether challenging it would help us <laughs> here okay i'm pausing a lot because there's a lot of thought process going on with this video and what I'm thinking about is because I'll be watching them Jubilee videos and shit like that. And like, I remember, I feel like a big issue with argument is people don't think about the topic in which they are arguing. I feel like that's a bigger struggle too. Like, if you actually think about it, like, for example, right? I don't know if it was Jubilee or a different one, but y'all know what I'm saying. It was like something along the lines of, do you think a child would benefit the best from a two parent household or a female male parent household? And a bunch of them said, no, we don't need a man. We don't need no this. You don't need no that. When the question was about just being a two parent household, it had nothing to do with this. I feel like a lot of people mix in other questions and other topics and then don't be relevant to the actual debate that you're trying to make. The actual point that you're trying to make. I was just watching another video with that dude, Kirk, whatever his name is. I don't know too much about him. He asked a question and it had nothing to do. You start answering other stuff like what is this what is that but that doesn't answer my question i feel like once we get past that then all this whole video would be very relevant to a lot of people let's make progress on the argument you can be a little bit more judicious in how you disagree and prevent our arguments from becoming this unruly all-encompassing dispute mm. if y'all watch jubilee well, some of y'all probably know that video is, though in order to be heard you have to first listen. People don't know how to do We're that. We're used to thinking about listening. People don't know how to listen. I'm sorry. People don't know how to listen, bro. You say one thing and they're going to completely say something different. Like, I remember I was talking to somebody and we had like a little disagreement, a little argument or something. And I was like, they said something that wasn't relevant to what we was talking about, right? And I was like, I'm not going to lie. That, that just doesn't matter. It don't matter. You know what they say? You, you don't care? It's not that I don't care. I'm just saying, like, we're trying to progress in this conversation. And that little piece of information that you gave, it doesn't really matter or resonate with our conversation. I can tell you I don't care, but that's not what I'm yeah, saying. It's an essentially passive act. We sit back in our chairs and take it all in. Debaters know that it's a much more active process than that. There are two lessons that we can take away from how debaters listen and to try and apply it in our own lives. Right. The first is, it is in your best interest to understand the opposition's argument as they would understand. It's not in your best interest to twist their meaning or to 
take it at its worst or to capture right. only a fraction of it. Capture a fraction of what they mainly do. they won't feel as though they had been listened to and heard and ultimately responded to. The second thing is, it's also in your best interest to respond to the strongest version of the other side and sometimes to build up the other side's case so that it's even better than where they have it now. You know, mm. after you finish speaking, the opposition might have a light bulb and come up with a better case. Or someone on their side might say, you've responded to the weak version of this argument, but here's something better. So the further you can take mm. it and the stronger the version of the other side you can respond to, the more you challenge. Are you in debate the strongest part of the argument? Don't take the smallest and or the worst part of it and try to argue it. I really wish pe people like actually like understood what this dude was trying to say. The other side to go even or even watch this video. The better the conversation becomes. But people that don't like stuff like this, so they'll watch this and get mad. Is an exercise in certainty. It's about spending sometimes weeks researching your side of the case, coming up with the best possible arguments that you can to sell the truth of your side to the listener. But in the last moments before a debater goes on stage, they know to take out a new sheet of paper and to put themselves in their opponent's shoes and write the four best arguments for the opposing side. They know also to look over their case again, this time through the eyes of someone who fervently disagrees with them, to identify all of the flaws and the criticisms that could be leveled against them. Okay. Debaters also know to imagine a world in which they lost the debate and to come up with the reasons why they did. Those exercises, which are called the side switch exercises, puts a pause on that feeling of certainty. Okay. It makes us feel for a moment the subjective reasonableness of other people's beliefs. It gives us that moment where we get back on our toes and think maybe we missed something. It makes us imagine a world in which we're wrong. And all of that imagine a world a where you are wrong through which something Some like self humility or empathy might arise. Humility and empathy. The side switch exercises and the kind of empathy that I like you love stuff like this. In my high school our teacher used to do this every single day it actually got me into like liking argument and having conversations it was she called it dbq uh though i forgot what it's called or what the acronym stands for but we'll have to write two or three paragraphs explaining like an ar our argument for a case or a situation whatever in history or whatever the topic was and then we have to write an opposing paragraph on how somebody may disagree and then at the end we have to then write on how that disagreement isn't necessarily true and how we can fight that disagreement so there's understanding both perspectives rather than just arguing all the time into the conversation builds empathy and humility like you said in personal disagreements but in my view more urgently needed than ever in our political disputes and ideological commitments. Each of us are bigger than our political affiliation, than our religious commitments, than our ideological beliefs. It's in that setting that exercises like side switch become most effective. Where? It expands the scope of what we are able to talk about. It enlarges and improves and strengthens our ability to talk about contentious and difficult issues in humane, compassionate, and productive.